advanced combat mechanics. And so my guys, if you guys have been hacking and slashing, you guys have kind of just been like ignoring everything else, CC, CC immunity, super armor, aerial combo, stuff like that, I'm about to change your game. Hi. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a Tower of Fantasy video. And again, we're going to be talking about advanced combat mechanics. It's going to be a lot of stuff just like stalling in the air, using your stamina efficiently, combos, CC chains, etc, etc. And then we're also going to be talking about the PvP meta because um, it, it's quite infuriating actually. All right. And so before we get into the advanced combat tips, first of all, let's talk about more of like the basic stuff, the quick progress knowledge check to see if that you at least know like the, the simple stuff, right? First things first, I'm the real but you also need these gears leveled up. Remember that these gears actually have these pluses enhancements carried over. So for example, these pauldrons plus five right now, if I switch them over, equip, uh, I can actually retain the stats. Now those green pauldrons are equipped and they are plus five. So don't worry about wasting your equip upgrade materials. You can actually retain them and swap them in and out. Second of all, matrices. Even the blue ones, they should be upgraded at least at some level. And same thing applies here. EXP actually carries over. Main equipment's maxed out. However, this is probably should be the most obvious one so I really shouldn't have needed to talk about this one and then very quickly let's talk about buffs because buffs especially from cooking are incredibly incredibly important so I've cooked up and have been using the seafood soup for quite a while increase frost attack 1% and frost attack 45 flat and I need to tell you guys this actually does carry into a whole bunch of other game modes. So unlike Genshin Impact's Abyss where you can't use any food, this buff is going to be carrying into your bygone phantasm. So I'm talking about that uh, Abyss Tower looking thing over here. And on top of that, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the Mia's Kitchen, she gives you a buff. And this buff you can actually also take into Bygone Phantasm. And so the last check is your Relic check, right? Because Relics, you can actually take them to most places, including PvP. I think that there are some really, really fat juices. Like for me, the current meta right now is like Colossus Arm. Although if you know how to play against it, it's pretty easy to just like wreck. Some people take the Jetpack, the Missile Barrage. Missile Barrage is probably my favorite one. And some people take Magnetic Storm. So yeah, my guys, just a quick check on all of these different aspects of combat stuff that you will need to keep in mind. Now, with all of that being said, let's start talking about the more advanced stuff. And so the first thing that you need to understand is the way that dodging and stamina works, right? So in Genshin Impact, which a lot of you have probably already played, the dodge and the stamina are actually coming from the same gauge. However, in this game, it's different. You see the dodge gauge is actually coming down. We've got three dodges that can be stored up and then it's using no stamina because only when I do aerial attacks like that, or if I use charge attacks like this, okay, maybe not that one, but if I use uh, Meryl's charge attack, then as you can see, the stamina is actually depleting. And this is really, really freaking important because if you're not using the stamina stuff, you are actually missing out on a lot of other juices, right? Like for example, this one is giving super armor, uh, AKA CC immunity. We'll talk about that very, very soon. So just quickly in combat, dodge has a few purposes, right? The first, the most obvious one is obviously your damage nullification, mitigation, whatever you want to call it. You take less damage when you dodge, especially because you actually have hit stun immunity. The second one that you already know about is your like matrix orb, uh, time space transcending thing the enemy glows red and then you do the thing you get like a purple circle etc etc I don't know how to describe it everyone's been doing it if you haven't been doing it I don't know man <laughs> I think you're playing the wrong game but the third point is probably the one that's most important to cover because the majority of you are not using it so it's dodge attacks right so if I use dodge and attack with my Huma, that throws out a projectile which actually stuns for 0.5 seconds on the other hand uh, if I use uh, NA for example if I dodge stun I mean dodge attack right so boom so what that means is that your dodge gauge is now actually a resource for your offensive capabilities right knowing that this can actually stun people or knowing that you can actually do this which is not actually that useful. It's just a little bit more damage, but you can see how some of these attacks can be really, really important, right? So like I said, this one has a 0.5 second stun. You've got the Shido who has something very similar, except it's not ranged. It's kind of melee. With Zubasa, it's the main way that you actually trigger the attack buff. And so yeah, etc., etc. I think you guys get the point. And so yeah, that's dodge and stamina in a nutshell, two separate concepts, right? Aerial attacks, look at that. And then as well as charge attacks for your stamina based ones. And then you've got your dodge attacks using the dodge gauge. A really good practical example of this is like 
prolonging your horizontal height. Like, look at that. I'm using my dodge gauge and I'm also using my stamina gauge to actually stay in the air for as long as possible. And you wouldn't be able to do this if they were sharing the same gauge. However, they are on two different gauges. So therefore, technically speaking, I'm tapping into two different pools of resources. And so the last thing I quickly wanted to touch on before we get into CC is this guy over here. You see this exclamation mark next to your minimap? Click on it and scroll to the very bottom and you'll be able to see the attack strings of all of the different weapons except for like, you know, the shield, which is the one that I have. For some reason, the shield's not here, but you get the idea. And then the other resource is actually in your weapon screen. You can click this magnifying glass and you can see all of the different effects as well as the different skills that they have. All right, now with all of that being said, let's start talking about CC. And if you guys don't know what CC is, CC stands for crowd control, in which you have some kind of utility in your skills that help you control the crowd, like stun them or freeze them, or maybe lower their movement speed, lower their attack speed. And so CC is generally categorized categorized into two different types, right? You got hard CC, which is, you see that stun over there? I'm stunning them like crazy. And that is meaning that they cannot actually do any actions. I've fully cucked them and they cannot move. They cannot actually use any skills. They can't normal attack. And so yeah, as you could see, it is mainly like your stuns, your freezes, your knock ups, knock downs. And then on the other hand, you have your soft CCs. Now I don't have anything equipped right now, but it's essentially things that would cuck you, but wouldn't like fully cuck you, right? So your movement speed goes down, attacks speed goes down, you feel like crap, right? You feel like shit playing the game, but you actually can still take actions. You can still move around. That is soft CC. And so the reason I'm talking about CC is because if the opponent is CC'd right, they are essentially downed. They sometimes take more damage depending on the circumstance and you are taking less damage because they can't take any action depending on if you used hard CC. And so if you can imagine getting CC'd all of the time, essentially you just be getting clapped, right? I'd be like not being able to take any action. I'd just be taking damage. And so that is like the ideal state. You want to be CCing as much as you can. And so, okay, that's all like well and good, right? Uh, we use as much CC as possible. Well then, how do we counter the CC? And that is via something called CC immunity. Now, if I click into this weapon over here, you can see sometimes that there is something called CC immunity and hyper body. So for example, the Ice Hammer NA, on her charge attack, she actually grants immunity to all control effects and hyper body while charging. Now I'm gonna show you what exactly that looks like because there is actually a visual indicator of when that happens. And that is that orange glow right there. So that skill that I just used, the discharge, also has CC immunity. It's also granted me CC immunity for a duration. Now, if I do that charge hold, you can see I am in CC immunity again. And so for that particular skill, we did see that there was like a distinction between CC immunity and hyper body, right? So CC immunity is immunity to all crowd control effects. However, hyper body, this one right here is actually immunity only to a select few. I believe it's like knock down, knock up and freeze. So you can still get stunned, etc., etc. And so yeah, that's all cool and great and stuff. However, whilst you're in these immunities, you actually still can take damage. So you do need to remember that. Now, there is something a little bit cool about Huma and some other characters where she actually has CC immunity on a couple of skills, but it doesn't explicitly say so. So for example, I have a clip here where one of my friends are about to use a CC ability, Zero's E or Zero's Discharge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whilst he's casting that, I'm going to use the E. And you're going to see that I don't have the super armor, I do not have the yellow glow, yet I still don't get CC'd. So I'm going to play the clip. And so you can see him using it, and you can see that I actually proceeded with my skill. I did not get stopped, I did not get CC'd, and so that is what I mean by there are some skills that actually do have CC immunity or hyper body, but they do not explicitly say so. Another example of this is Huma's shield form charge skill. So when you charge skill with her shield form, she actually places it on the ground and she's just in a defensive stance. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna use that same CC skill. I'm gonna show you that I don't get CC'd when I actually use that charge skill. See, and I can still take action. You can see all of my actions are available to me. So honestly, the only way that you can really tell about all of this, and as you can see, I just use my E skill to negate his CC. You can only really tell with some testing, right? Because well, I haven't found any kind of like database that explains this. And so here, I'm gonna show you that not all of the weapon skills actually have the super armor. I'm about to use the Tsubasa E as he's gonna stun me or knock me back. And you can see I got freaking clapped. And so my guys, that is the essence of PVP, right? CC them as much as you can and be in CC immunity as much as you can. And that is what makes these robot arms so freaking good. I'm just spanking him, I am knocking him up, 
I am, that, that sounds really, really freaking lewd. I'm making sure that he is CC'd as much as possible and those robot arms actually give me CC immunity. No, okay, no, it's not true. Hyper body immunity. So those robot arms can actually get frozen. And so yeah, that brings us to essentially, again, the PVP meta. It's not feasible to be like, oh, timing all of your skills to be able to block immunes unless you're on like zero ping, right? And so the next best thing that we can do is rotate through all of our super armor, AKA CC immunity skills. So use as many skills as you can that are including that yellow glow. And so this is why units such as NA are so strong, right? We've got the super armor skill on the charge attack. And then on top of the super armor, you actually get a CC built into that skill. So it's a two in one skill. On the other hand, we've got characters like Meryl and she on her charge attack consuming stamina is actually in super armor. So that means that you can't be stopped when you actually go ahead and spin to win. Then on Meryl's E, you can see I am going into a super armor state. And note that you can actually steer this skill. And there are some other skills that you can actually steer. And you saw what I meant by steer, right? I could actually rotate the skill in the direction that I wanted it. Another thing to note is the weapon resonance because this fortitude weapon resonance is actually incredibly cracked, especially, especially for PVP play. This guy gives increased damage reduction by 25%, but the real juicer is the shatter by 60% because the faster you shatter somebody in PvP, the faster you can kill them, right? Because when their shield shatters, not only can you do more damage, but they are actually CC'd for quite a long time. So people who don't run this fortitude, I think they maybe shatter me once, shatter my entire shield. But generally speaking, when I run Huma as well as my Meryl, I can shatter about maybe three times per PvP match. And so therefore, yeah, I would definitely recommend trying to run something fortitude, whether it be like NA and Meryl or Huma and Meryl, something like that right and so whilst we're also on the screen i want to remind you guys that we actually have c6 or six star weapons during pvp what this means is that you have to get very very familiar with all of these advancements because there are some really really cracked out ones such as meryl's c6 Upon switching to a weapon, gain an ice shield equal to 20% of max HP and immune to controls when the shield is active. This has a 20 second cooldown and the shield lasts for 10 seconds. So that means that if the opponent cannot break your shield over the 10 seconds, the uptime of this shield is freaking 50%. And so you only need 10 seconds of other super armor skills to buy time to get the ice shield again. On the other hand, you have Meryl C1, which increases your shatter by 15% and restores HP after you shatter their shield. That is an inbuilt heal, without actually explicitly being a healer. One other thing that makes that fortitude trait so, so impressive is that when you attack and shield break somebody else, your shield actually gains. So as you can see, whilst I'm attacking, I'm actually gaining shield whilst my opponent is losing shield, right? Another pretty good example over here, I am actually gaining so much shield from using that E and I have depleted so much of his shield. And I think that this shield stealing mechanic, quote unquote, is probably one of the reasons as to why I'm going to heavily, heavily recommend the fortitude trait. So here I'm actually versing another Huma slash Nemesis player I think and they're really really freaking good. I'm pretty sure I get clapped but essentially he saw me using the E, he used his E in response right. So he is in super armor essentially the entire time. I get stunned over here because I didn't rotate my super armor fast enough and so he actually got some extra damage on me. And then I actually rotate into Meryl and continue to use super armor from the E skill. Remember that her charge attack that consumes stamina also has super armor and then I go into the robot hands. But essentially you can see I'm trying to desperately CC him whilst trying to not get CC and that slow, that orb from Nemesis is actually incredibly strong because it slows my move speed by 70%. I can't reach him and so therefore I am getting kited. Now this match actually has a lot of interesting things going on. So first of all is that things that you thought were grounded attacks, for example, I just did the heavy axe slam and the opponent was in the air, but you just saw the opponent actually got knocked down. So what that means is that even though a skill looks like it is going to be a ground only attack, there's a pretty strong chance that it is aerial. And another example of that is actually the spin to win. So you can see that old mate is actually in the air. I'm spinning to winning and there are actually blue numbers popping up there because I am doing damage. Although I am on the ground, I am still doing damage despite him being in the air. And whilst I am doing this damage, I am in super armor. So he cannot actually stop me. This guy using the king skin is actually really freaking good because he kept hitting me with these nemesis orbs. It slowed me and then it meant that I couldn't actually chase him down. All the while his turrets were just like smacking me with their pulses. See, that is so freaking crippling. And then when he finally engages me, he goes straight into super armor. And you can see I'm trying to desperately stay in super armor as well. And then I do manage to break him, get a couple of hits, 
but I went for my slam, which should have CC'd him, but he went into his super armor. And so yeah, this guy clapped me really, really freaking hard. And unfortunately I lost, but this match did teach me a lesson though. And that is that Nemesis players are always going to humble me if they know what they're doing. Because if he wasn't using super armor, I would have like clapped his ass with a lot of CC. And so the last thing I want to talk about is your discharge seal. So as you can see, I am being CC'd over here in the middle of the screen. And you can see that I cannot use my E, which is my weapon skill, and I cannot use the other things. So uh, hopefully you can see that a little bit better. I cannot use my relics, I cannot use my normal attack, and I cannot use my weapon skill. However, my one and my two, my discharge skills are actually available. And they're available because you can use discharge skills to cleanse all of the CC effects, including this knock up, and then actually get back into action. So that is actually exactly what I did. I'm going to get knocked up, and then I use, whilst mid air being knocked up, I use my discharge skill and I am back in action. I am now rotating my super armor skills again and I'm okay. I'm not I'm not dead, so that's okay. And you can see I'm I'm getting freaking wrecked by all of that desync. However, my guys, that's kind of everything that I wanted to cover today. Hopefully that was pretty comprehensive as to like all of the advanced combat mechanics that you do need to know about, be aware of, and start abusing if you do want to do well in PvP. If you guys do have any other questions, do let me know down in the comments below. If you guys wanted like a PvP tier list, let me know as well. Like I do think that Zero is pretty cracked here. I think that Coco is pretty good, but I do think that the kings of PvP are gonna be like your Huma, it's gonna be your Meryl, it's gonna be your Nemesis, it's gonna be your NA, etc, etc. Actually got clapped really hard by an NA player before. But otherwise, my guys, please consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on that notification bell if you did enjoy the video. But uh, as a as a pair of robot arms once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.